Hello, everyone. Welcome back. You want to talk about a busy, busy, busy Friday afternoon. It feels like they've been like that, like absolutely forever. You know, we may be having a technical difficulty here and uh, maybe, maybe not. No, we're good. We're good. We just, uh, I, I think we're live right now on YouTube and we are live over on Facebook, and that's wonderful. Uh, apologies to my Rumble and Twitter folks right now, but we're going to continue moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, because we got a lot to get to. And I, I have to tell you what's going on over at Fox News, because this is new, and they're playing with fire here. They've been known to do that before, a time or two before. Um, so Fox News uh, back in the hot seat, and we've got Disney in the hot seat as well. Not surprised, really, by any of this. You know, as everybody tries to move further and further left, it keeps getting them in trouble. It's why I keep saying, you know what? you got to think long and hard about all of these companies right now and what really and truly motivates them. Plus, this, this Diddy stuff, I don't know, something doesn't sit right to me. Because now I'm starting to think, you know, wait a second. He was living this life. Everybody knew from what we keep hearing now, that it was a pretty forsaken existence, shall we say. And yet nobody did anything about it. And so there were reports of trafficking and underage women and illicit substances, etc. And yet nobody did anything. So why did it take this long? Could it be because suddenly they found out that there was tons and tons of tape? on anyone and everyone that had been there, thanks to a lawsuit that was filed roughly three weeks before the feds went in and whoosh, went out with all the tapes? I mean, how is it that the guy hasn't been arrested yet? Tell me. I mean, wow, wow. They wanted something and they needed to go in there and get it. And is he not going to pay any penalty? Why has Diddy not been arrested? Ask yourself that question. I've got some details on it that we need to discuss. Welcome back to the Trish Regan Show. Good to have you here. One of our main sponsors, our friends over at LegacyPMInvestments.com. LegacyPMInvestments.com, 1-866-589-0560. Give them a ring to diversify. Listen, inflation is bad. Don't we know? One other story I want to get to today as well is Bidenomics and what he's pulling with truckers right now. Because, you know, I'll tell you. You don't want to mess with truckers. You don't. You don't mess with Texas and you don't mess with truckers. And yet that's exactly what Biden is doing. Just months before the election with his new EPA requirements on all the big vehicles that are going to be going down the highway. But first we begin. Fox News back in the hot seat. Ladies and gentlemen, they are getting sued again. You see, we've already reported at length on the Dominion lawsuit which cost Fox News nearly a billion dollars. We've reported on the Smartmatic lawsuit, which is still in the works and could cost them a whole boatload more because Smartmatic now knows the ins and outs and the points of weakness, shall we say, and is asking for a whole lot more. The ask is way higher than Dominion's was. And then we know about the shareholder lawsuits because logically shareholders are like, hey, 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 hey. You know, management... If you didn't think this was true, why did you allow your talent to say it on the air? Why didn't you have some kind of system in place that said, you know, this is really no-go territory? Why would you keep inviting the same old guests back, allowing them to defame a corporation if you didn't even believe this? How can you sit there and hide behind journalism in that case? Because actually, what you were really doing is trying to go for ratings in a rather untruthful way. If you didn't believe it, and yet everybody was doing this. And so obviously shareholders have a right to sue in that case because it's a kind of negligence. What's management doing? If they don't like that this is going down, then why does the talent keep hitting it over and over and over again? I mean, to Tucker Carlson's credit, he didn't really. But, you know, all this stuff comes out and there's text between him and other people and management, oh, they don't like this. And yet, and yet it kept going on the air. Running the asylum, 
there's a question for you. Well, now they're facing another lawsuit. I think the answer, by the way, is yes. And by the way, the inmates should not be in the asylum. Just let the inmates loose so that they can do their own thing. <laughs> right? All the more reason for you to subscribe to this show, to this podcast. I'm here every day live, sometimes twice a day. What do you know? On a busy day like today, I did have to go over and talk to my friends at Newsmax. I hope you caught that live on Chris Salcedo's show. We were talking about Bidenomics. I'm going to get to a little bit more of that in just a moment. But look, Fox is struggling for a variety of reasons we can get into. But the headline today is Tony Bobolinsky who is the former business partner of Hunter Biden. You know, they were doing that deal in China with that Chinese energy company because apparently it's, it's, it's all good to do deals with traditional natural gas energy companies out of China and Romania and Ukraine. You just can't do any with any of them here in the U.S., right? Because we get all this ESG stuff and we, we're all about green, but we can do them with the Chinese companies. Anyway, Tony Bubablinski is suing Fox and suing one of the anchors because of some allegedly false information that she put on the air. But let me start by reminding you, I know you know who he is, but you know, this was a pretty good quote. I could actually loop it and play it twice. Drew, what, what do you say? Do we have Jim Jordan asking Tony Bubablinski who the big guy was? Mr. Bubablinski, who's the big guy? Are you sure about that? Because when Jordan, when, uh, Joe you're Biden, sure? you're sure? I'm a thousand percent sure. <laughs> Mr. Bobolinsky, who's the big guy? Joe Are you sure about that? Because when Jordan, when, uh, Joe you're Biden, sure? you're sure? I'm a thousand percent sure. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> I really, really love that one. I really, really love it. And uh, you, you could you could just sort of watch that in a loop, right? We should put that up on shorts if we haven't already. So <laughs> Tony Bobolinsky is saying that Joe Biden, the president of the United States, was the big guy and that they were doing all these deals. Credit, he was out of office at the time they were talking to the Chinese. But the problem is, is that the guy who was running the Chinese company, Zhang, well, he was kind of tight with the CCP, so it's really, it's not a great look, whether or not it's illegal. I mean, the Ukrainian stuff, like that actually, I think, you know, Republicans have a leg to stand on with that one because your son should not be collecting tons of money from Ukraine while you are in charge as vice president of the United States of Ukrainian policy and have the ability to give or take away lots and lots of money as he made very clear. So that, that's a, a, a potential you know, use of your influence in a really gross way, un-American way. I mean, we're not, I used to think, a corrupt nation like you find in Latin America or Eastern Europe, but apparently we are. Apparently that is what we have become. Let's not be naive. Your son's working for an energy company, a natural gas company in Ukraine. You had a son who, who gets discharged from the military, he has no knowledge about this natural gas business. He gets this gig while you're running Ukraine policy. And then the very guy that was investigating your son's company that was paying him insane amounts of money every month to sit on the board, you go and demand get fired. That doesn't look good. Anyway, Tony Bobolinsky is like, he's the big guy, he's the big guy, he's the big guy. And so, you know, now he's in this legal trouble. He's going to go testify before Congress, et cetera. And one of the commentators on Fox News, who actually behind the scenes, and I know her, is a very nice young woman, but she's playing a bit of a part there, right? Let's, let's be honest. They have her employed in that job to kind of be the agitator. They need someone, right? And she's the go-to agitator. But she might have spoken incorrectly, at least according to Boba Blinsky, she did. And so now Jessica Tarlov is getting harassed pretty badly by him, sued by Tony Boba Blinsky. She'll be covered, you know, indemnified and that sort of thing under Fox. But Fox is also getting sued. And this is just not good timing shall we say. Let's watch and see what Jessica said that was so offensive to Mr. Bobolinsky. Tony Bobolinsky's lawyer's fees have been paid 
by a Trump super PAC. That's as recent as January. Do you think that a guy who's invested in how much better off he wants the United States to be and really getting to the bottom of this would be taking money from the guy who extorted the Ukrainians to get dirt on the Bidens? And we should talk about Lev Parnas, who's the Democratic witness. I'm doing a technical thing here with the computer. Well, so that was, you know, what she said. And she's like, look, he's getting all his legal fees paid by, you know, the, the, the GOP and Trump and the RNC and this, that, and the other. And so Tony Bobulinski is like, no, that's not correct. That's not correct. And you need to apologize. So he came out right after that happened, like that night or the very next day, and his lawyers fired off this nasty letter to Fox News. And they demanded an apology at the top of the show. Well, this is his response after, we're getting to that. They demanded an apology at the top of the show, which is really unusual on television, right? Like you don't start your show with, gosh, we were wrong. And then they, they demanded that she be like, you know, a little bit not flip about it. Now, I know, Jessica, I don't think she could deliver this and not be not flip about it because I'm sure she was pretty perturbed about the whole thing. And so she comes off as, well, pretty flip. Let's watch Jessica Tarlow's apology, which was clearly written, and she's reading straight from the prompter, which is clearly a little challenging as well. <laughs> I would like to clarify we have a comment it. I go. made yesterday during our discussion of Tony Bobolinsky's appearance at the congressional hearing. During an exchange with my colleagues about the hearing, I said that Mr. Bobolinsky's lawyer's fees have been paid by a Trump super PAC as recently as January. What was actually said during the hearing was that the law firm representing Mr. Bobolinsky was paid by a Trump PAC. I have seen no indication those payments were made in connection with Mr. Bobolinsky's legal fees, and he denies that they were. All right, coming up next, a member of the... block. It may have been at the end of what they call the A block, which is the first block in the show, which, you know, if it's at the end of the A block, it's something. But she didn't lead the show with it. So Bubba Blinsky's like, uh-uh, that's not an apology. And, you know, it's, I get it. It doesn't really feel very heartfelt, right? And he's like, you are defaming me and my reputation, and this isn't fair. And this was just one incident. I mean, you imagine how Dominion felt, right? Because it kept coming and coming and coming and coming. And they're like, this is our business and it's going up in smoke. And you guys are saying things that aren't true, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they, it, you know, they wound up with nearly a billion dollars as a result. What's Jessica going to be dealing with? I mean, how much would Tony Bobolinsky get out of this? He says he actually doesn't really want money, money. Anything that he gets out of this lawsuit is going to be donated to charity. Let's go to his statement because he saw her apology. It wasn't enough. He went back to them and said, fix it. And they didn't. And so here you go. He writes, today, I filed a lawsuit against Ms. Jessica Tarlov of Fox News for defamation. Although I am seeking compensatory, special, and punitive damages from her for the public, for the damage her public remarks inflicted on my personal and professional reputation, this is not about money. This is about the truth, for which I have been fighting for four years. It is important for media personalities like Ms. Tarloff to understand that lies have consequences. I have consistently told the truth to the American people, he writes, about the deep corruption of the Biden family and will continue to do so. And I have paid my legal expenses arising from my decision to come forward out of my own pocket. I will donate, he writes, every penny I may be awarded in this suit to a children's hospital and to support our military veterans. Ms. Tarlov refused to apologize and sincerely correct the record. I look forward to holding her accountable in a court of law and continuing to bring the truth to the American people. Anthony Bobolinsky. Ooh. You know, it's interesting because he's picking a fight with her and with Fox. A lot of people have gone after Tony. So it's like, it's very interesting to me. Like, they're, they're picking some interesting fights. I mean, I, I think, frankly, it's important to pick these fights because truth does need to be represented. And people should not be flip about what they say about individuals 
that also aren't entirely in the public eye. You know, it's one thing when I call Nancy Pelosi Marie Antoinette, right? It, it, it's, it's one thing when we talk about Joe Biden and we say, gosh, the guy seems really old. I mean, these are public figures. When we talk about celebrities and people in the public eye, it's one thing. Tony Bobolinsky, has he crossed that sphere? I mean, he was kind of a private person and then gets thrown into all of this. He had the bad misfortune of teaming up with Hunter Biden, and now he's thrust into the public eye. And so a lot of people have said a lot of bad things about him, but he's choosing to go after this particular anchor and this network specifically. It's almost like you could think of it like a warning shot. I mean, Donald Trump did the same thing with George Stephanopoulos. Just a couple of weeks ago, George Stephanopoulos referred to him as something really, really bad, as a rapist, et cetera, on the air. And that actually hadn't been proven out in court. And so, you know, there was defamation, et cetera. But what Stephanopoulos was alleging was like that much further, right? And so Trump said, hey, hey, see ya, I'll see you in court. And so he sued Stephanopoulos and he sued ABC News. And it's like, hey, you know what, media? I realize, you know, you think you can just keep getting away with saying whatever you want to say as it serves your purpose, but these are people's lives. And so you got to take a little bit more responsibility. And then maybe when you really upset them, Tony would have been happy with a heartfelt apology. Like maybe, maybe she should have not had it written by the managers. I get it. You know, legal wants to be involved in everything. But that's when the, you need a little prompter practice, maybe, because you ought to sound like you mean it. <laughs> she definitely, definitely didn't mean it. So he's not happy. He's suing. And you know what? Listen, I mean, defamation is a big, big deal thing. So we shall see what happens on that front. I am sure this is not fun uh, for, for Jessica. Keep in mind, she's indemnified. So Fox will pay the legal bills and deal with it. But maybe she'll have a little more gravitas next time around. Maybe you got to think about what you're saying about the individual's themselves, right? Especially individuals that are not superstars like P. Diddy. We'll get to him because that is one wild, wild case. Another media company that's in trouble, Disney. Disney's in the hot seat right now, specifically the CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, because there's big shareholder meeting coming up. And Nelson Peltz, who's a billionaire investor, who's anti-woke, believe me, he just wants to make money. He's like, why does this, why does this, why does this company keep showing me movies with all women or all black people. He's like, no, I don't have anything against any of them. But like, can we not just have a cast that's representative of what you think the cast would be? Like, what is this that they're trying to spoon feed me? And by the way, why do we have to keep doing sequels? Can nobody come up with anything new, creatively speaking? No, 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 they're just doing woke remakes. You see the woke remake of Snow White, the tune of $350 million that they may have just flushed on a you know what, because apparently, that thing has been indefinitely canceled. And then you got Star Wars, Star Wars, the show. Dude, we, this, is, this is amazing. So this is, in, um, this is in like a report that is called Inside the Magic. So if you're like really into Disney, and uh, I used to be, I used to really, really like it. And then, you know, occasionally you might have your kids bugging you to go on something like a Disney cruise. Well, you're probably on this site at some point because they do everything Disney and you're going to read the good, bad, and the ugly. They tend to like Disney. Anyway, they reported that the new Star Wars series was just canceled just months before the premiere. So it's sort of shocking. This is this Leslie Hayland, and she's one of their diverse hires that, you know, is all about, you know, sort of the new Disney and the new Star Wars, et cetera. And I guess this was her baby. And I, 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 I'm sort of surprised here. The second season of Lucasfilm's upcoming Star Wars series was already in the works, but now an insider claims the opposite. A source recently told That Park Place that Leslie Hayward's new Star Wars series, The Acolyte, which debuts on Disney Plus on June 4th, will not be getting a second series, effectively canceling the show before it even airs. 
So, wow. Um, again, like I, I have not personally vetted this, so I want to be careful, but it's a pretty good site about Disney stuff. And they, they believe that this, uh, this one is getting its plug pulled. So why? Ask yourself why. I mean, I think right now the main focus at Disney is the shareholder vote that's coming. Nelson Peltz, billionaire investor, as I told you, he really, really, really wants to see some changes. He's sick of the sequels. He's sick of Bob Iger not having a plan to replace himself because listen, that's what got them in all this trouble, right? Didn't they have the, the, the other Bob, Bob Chapik come in there and Bob Chapik, like the whole thing went to H E double L like that, like within a minute and the, the staff sort of wouldn't accept him, et cetera, et cetera. And so Nelson is like, listen, you need to have a replacement strategy. You need to have a content strategy. And hey, while you're at it, can you like reduce the lines and the fees at the Disney parks? There was a story out just last week, Orlando. It was actually this week, I think. Orlando airports. They're like on overdrive. There's so many people in the Orlando airports right now. People like are struggling with these long, long lines because it's spring break and everybody's going to Disney. And so now you're sitting there for 81 minutes in the heat trying to get on Space Mountain. Really? I mean, you pay $140, $160 for that? So yeah, this company needs some help. And this company is really the upshot, the baby of wokeism. And the problem with wokeism is that it doesn't actually concern itself with things like reality. And reality would tell you, you need to turn a profit if you actually want to have investors invest in your company. And if you can't, and if you can't produce good content and you're a content company, then you're going down the tubes fast. Granted, there's other things going on, right? I mean, the streaming industry is taking over. I hope that you have subscribed to this show. I mean, this is great. I love being here with you in this very sort of new format. It's incredible. I thank you for being here. Make sure that you have subscribed. Make sure that you sign up. It is important right now. Give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Make a comment, join the live conversation. We're going to go to team members in just a, a well, at the end of the show. And I am going to actually take some of your comments as, as we wind down. But just keep in mind that the industry is changing so, so quickly. And so as it changes, you're going to have companies like Disney that either keep up or are left behind. Fox, it might get left behind, right? I mean, let's face it. You look at that share price. That's nothing where it was. Kind of a similar story to Disney because all of these media companies are having to shift and rearrange. I'll tell you, content will still matter, but content is being distributed so differently. To think that I can be here with you, I mean, I'm going to get on my sort of soapbox about that, but it's amazing right now. And it's all the more reason I need you to subscribe to the channel and to do the likes and to do the comments and all that stuff because it matters. Um, but wokeism is a virus that has infected almost every corner of our society, whether it be what's going on at the border. Oh no, we can't turn people away. No, because that wouldn't be nice. We've got to be too woke, right? We're too woke for that. We're not going to turn them away. We're going to welcome them all here, except that we don't have the capacity at all in any way, shape or form economically, sort of infrastructure wise to handle this. And, and now we don't even know who's here. Isn't that a good one, right? We have no idea who's in the country because Joe Biden just opened the spigot. Welcome to everybody in. Come one, come all. I mean, I got the tape. I won't show you today, but we'll have that for next week. Listen, you go back to those debates in 2020 and he was all over this saying, listen, my opponent thinks that we should have a wall and a border. I don't believe in that. Because <laughs> you're too woke for that, I guess, which means you're too moronic for that. Like you are moronic if you think that we shouldn't have a border. Every other country in the world. I mean, listen, you cannot go anywhere and not show your passport. I'm not suddenly showing up in Mexico without a passport and then thinking I'm going to get to vote in the local school board election. Thank you very much. No, because Mexico wouldn't allow it. Nobody would allow this except for Joe Biden because he's so woke. He's so woke that he has landed us in a mess with massive inflation because he's shutting down all the solid energy options we have in the favor of green energy. The only problem is you don't have enough 
to supply with all the green energy. So what are you doing? You're raising the prices on everyday folks over and over and over again. Listen, it's such a part of why I started 76 Research. If you guys don't know it, make sure you go there. I think a lot of you have signed up, but since we have so many new people in the chat today, I'm going to give them the URL once again, 76research.com. Oh, Don, you became a team member. That's great to see. And I hope you're on 76research.com as well. We actually have a new report out today, the 76 report, and there's a really phenomenal, phenomenal company that's featured in there. That's one of our long-term holdings in our dividend portfolio or income builder portfolio. By the way, if you go to the site and you want to actually subscribe to one of the model portfolios, I have a code, code um, divs76, that I'm going to give you because this will give you 20% off, divs76. But the model portfolio like looks at these long-term holdings. The 76 report is a little more entry level, and you can also sign up for that as well. And it does have some of the picks. Uh, at, at various times that we have in the, in the larger model portfolios. But there's a great company in there that is a phenomenal inflation play. Um, just really terrific because inflation is only going one way. You think about, again, what's happening with this woke environment and Joe Biden announcing today new EPA requirements yet again. I mean, so, so we'll get to that in a second because I have a lot to say on that. But it's, it's like they're sticking it to truckers and, and everyday folks in a way that is going to make it really hard and really difficult for them in the future, thanks to all this inflation. So we have an inflation pick in there. Um, but let me, let me get back to Disney here because Joe, Joe Biden, Bob Iger, Joe Biden, <laughs> they're kind of feeling like one and the same, although one is a whole lot older. Did you see him on that stage last night? Oh my goodness. Somebody was saying he kind of looked like a wax figure. It was a really interesting contrast between the three presidents with their $25 million fundraiser and President Trump out there offering to pay off the mortgage and give a little extra money to the family of the fallen police officer, Officer Diller, who died on the job. It was just amazing to see because it really contrasted where the Democrat Party has gone. It has become, if you would, that party of the elites versus the Republicans, which have become the party of working class Americans that believe in all that this country can do and all that this country offers. And so Bob Iger has gotten, you know, caught up in this whatever Kool-Aid that he's drinking. And he's part of that elite class. And he's got an elite company that's quickly just losing its luster. I mean, Disney and the success that Disney, what's represented in the sort of Americana that was Disney gone. It's totally, utterly gone. Who wants to go to Disney anymore? The, the sort of greatness that you, you thought of when you thought of that company and everything that Walt Disney built, it's over. And so I think Hollywood's starting to realize this too, because if it's over for Disney, it's over for Bob. There was an article in the Hollywood Reporter I scribbled all over this one. If Drew has it, it says, wow, I just was amazed when I saw this. Bob Iger's invincible error is over. After a major Wall Street firm sides with activist Nelson Peltz ahead of an April 3rd holders meeting, investors are questioning how the CEO plans to plot out growth and his own succession. So are his days numbered? Look, I think investors still like him. They've been to the other side with the other Bob, Bob Chapek. They know how bad that was. They're still hopeful that Iger can pull through. But Nelson, he's serious, and he wants a voice at the table. And he's got now the, the, a lot of you know, interesting new backers that are coming out for him. So if this goes in his favor, he's going to get some board seats, and he's going to demand change at Disney. And Disney's like, oh, no, we don't want anybody involved in our business, right? We want, we want to w make all the woke Star Wars movies we want to make. And they don't want him involved. They think he would be a very bad influence. So April 3rd is the day. It's the shareholder vote. And we need to watch for it very, very, very carefully. Turning to uh, the story of the moment, the really weird story of the moment, and that would be P. Diddy. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny just even having me say that. <laughs> P. Diddy, Diddy, Sean Combs. 
So this guy um, is, is quite a character. I mean, look, I, I'm going to be very forthcoming with you. I don't have a lot of appreciation for rap music. Surprise, surprise. I can't get beyond the lyrics, the derogatory, horrific lyrics. I mean, you want to talk about objectifying and demeaning women? There you go. Just look at any of these songs and it, it's there for you. So I, I, I don't like the industry. I don't like the sort of um, the, the, the grossness that it represents. And I don't like how they refer to women and, and how there's no real appreciation. Again, for the, the American great values of family and tradition, etc. So that's what I think about rap. So none of this really should be terribly surprising about Diddy because he was known for years and years and years to have this really extravagant and disgusting lifestyle. He did. And it, we're now learning that everybody's like, oh yeah, you know, well, we knew about this forever. We knew about this. We knew about that. Well, what we're learning about is pretty bad. But I have some questions here. Because why is it now? that the feds just suddenly busted in. Drew, do we have that video? I mean, it was incredible. The local news was there. They had a helicopter shot. <laughs> it was really something to see. And they're busting in, and they're holding. I think one of the sons was like held, had his hands up. They're holding him up. And these guys were not, like, they were detained, but they were not arrested. And by the way, Diddy still has not been arrested. So I'm like, why? Apparently, they got tipped off that there were all these cameras in the house. And we're talking about a big, a big, you know what house, right? So this is a massive house that he's got. Well, you know, a couple of properties that they went after. And so the feds bust in, they get the warrants for all this. And yet he's not arrested. I mean, why would that be? Did the feds get what they want? Are they trying to build a case? Is that what it is? We've learned through various sources, including uh, some people that have spoken with Rolling Stone, that the, the victims, the alleged victims in this particular case are coming forward quite willingly. This Rodney Jones lawsuit that was filed some three weeks and change just before the feds bust in on Pity's place, we learned that there was all kinds of things that may have happened. And the feds are going in for, um, well, trafficking. So trafficking of human beings, one would assume underage girls, the Mann Act would be what you would be in violation of because you cannot go across state lines. And apparently they were traveling from Miami to California to also a spot in the Caribbean. And so if this were to be, say, like the Jeffrey Epstein case on steroids, I would just say, well, where's the arrest? Why hasn't that happened yet? Was this really about getting the cameras themselves? That's what I'm sort of wondering. And I'm also wondering because, you know, like he's sort of part of that protected class. Like he's got friends in high places, shall we say. We're talking like the former president of the United States and the wife of the former president of the United States. Cue this tape, Drew. One of the few politicians that young people relate to. And we wanted to just hear a message on why you feel it's important for them to vote this year. I really think that this year, more than any other, uh, young people have their entire futures at stake. And I believe your slogan, vote or die, is accurate. When you want to be the president of the United States, you, you call your man. Call MTV. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I just want to say how much I appreciate Puff Dan. For, for doing the kinds of work that he's doing because he doesn't have to do this. And I want to apologize for not sweating, but I, but I do this so much. I, I'm so cool. I just want y'all to see everybody I'm interviewing is sweating. I'm not even touching my brow. I'm so cool. And I want to apologize. I ain't trying to make you look bad or nothing like that, but I'm just so cool. Um, we, 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 we. a t-shirt. <laughs> I tell you, if he was wearing one of those fancy designer clothes he's designing, he'd be sweating just like me. My name is Sarah Obama. No, my name is not Barack Obama. My name is Sarah Obama. It's very important that you do not believe the polls. The polls are trying to say that my brother from another mother, Barack Obama, is up leading in the polls by 10 points. Don't believe that, brother. See, this is where we mess up. 
we start believing in the hype and we get too comfortable. Be ready to stand in the lines. Let's keep the heat on. Let's bring it home. <laughs> All right, so this guy knows some peeps. I'm laughing at your comments. You're like, oh, no, no. Don's like, I got friends in low places. I said, that's a country song. I'm pretty sure it's got, I'm not, a country music I like, okay? Country music I like. I even like most pop. I do have a classical background, so there's that. I don't really like the rap stuff, okay? <laughs> like, I just don't. And so we'll see what comes of this. I, I, I know that Diddy is, um, you know, getting a lot of dirty laundry exposed, shall we say, including his alleged relationship, whatever that may have been, with 50 Cent's ex-girlfriend. I was going to say wife, but she's the ex-girlfriend. She's the mother of his child. And he was pretty upset. We've got his tweets from yesterday, Drew, right? He's like, oh, well, first of all, he hates P. Diddy. Like 50, how do I know these things, right? <laughs> like, I'm a good reporter. He hates P. Diddy. He hates him so much, and he just has been trolling him like you wouldn't believe. He's like, listen, you know, you, you're going to be in trouble now. Now it's not did he do it, it's did he done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. That's 50 Cent trolling him. And then there was this bit of information. We had the pictures of the ex-girlfriend. She's really pretty, named Daphne Joy. I wonder if that's really her name. She's this beautiful woman. And so this was his significant other. They, they share a child together. It came out in this Rodney Jones lawsuit that somehow Daphne had a thing going with P. Diddy, allegedly, and she was on the payroll for this thing, <clears throat> along with some other women. And so then her, her ex, 50 Cent, found out about this in the lawsuit and started tweeting about that one, in which he wrote, do we have these tweets? You know, he's, he's well, let's just suffice it to say, he was pretty derogatory, really, really derogatory to her. And he said, as a result of what he learned, he's gonna see her in family court. In other words, he wants full custody of their son as a result of what he's learned, or has been alleged, I should point out, in this lawsuit. Now, she's fired back. And she's like, it's not true. These allegations are crazy. There's the CEO of Universal Music as well who was mentioned in this lawsuit. And he's fired back and his lawyers and Universal. And they're like, this is crazy. There is no truth to this. This is just, you know, somebody trying to capitalize on our names and reputations. And so she's furious because she's like, no, no, no. Like, how dare you say these things? She actually had a pretty meaningful statement that she put out saying, look, you know, I, I had hoped for better from you and, and for the sake of our child. And clearly that's not the case. So she's furious too. I mean, that is going to be an epic battle. So um, <laughs> I'm learning more about this rap world that I didn't really uh, have a whole lot of interest in until quite recently. Maybe you guys too, because what fascinates me is just the role of the government in all of this. Clearly, they didn't care about him and what he was doing until now. So ask yourself, why now? Why was it necessary to go guns blazing into this thing and, and tear the whole home apart? What were they looking for, and why have they not arrested him? These are some important questions to leave you with. Thank you for, you know, I, I have gotten so many compliments from you guys lately, and I love it. I'm looking forward to having a great Easter weekend, and I'm telling you, we were just planning out the menu because I'm doing the cooking. I'm doing the cooking, and so I was there with my, my, my husband and the kids, and I'm like, okay, so what do we want? And everybody wants, like, carrots and Brussels sprouts. I can take those, I guess, more than I can the strawberries and the raspberries and blah, 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 but, you know, I... I, I'm probably, I should be better about eating my fruits and vegetables. I remember when I was a little kid and my mom would make me eat my peas. And I mean, it was not good. I used to, I used to, I used to like eat some to keep her happy. And then I'd go and spit them out behind the television and she'd find them <laughs> when she went to vacuum, probably all moldy and crusted over, but I never really liked peas. I still don't like my peas. So, uh, you know, hey, look, I, I would much rather any day of the week have the piece of chocolate cake over the plate of fruit, but that's just me. I don't know if that's you, that's just me. And so 
balance of nature came to me and they said, Hey, you know, would you be interested in trying the product? And you know, what do you think? And I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I would read so many wonderful reviews about it. So I tried it. I was like, gosh, this is pretty good. Like I feel really good. I feel excellent. I feel like sort of in, in the best health that I've ever, and I, I, I think I look okay too. So I'm like, you know what? I think these vitamins are kind of something. And I, I wanted to share this with you, including the discount that I've secured for you guys. Um, so I'm, I'm taking these every day, fruits and veggies. Now I know I get my nutrients every single day, thanks to balance of nature. You can get 35% off if you use my name, code word Trish. So go to balanceofnature.com. You can also call them. Here's their number, 1-800-246-8700. Eight seven five one discount code Trish. Make sure you use that discount code because that's what's going to score you the deal. Thirty five percent off. Make sure you use my name. It's good for me too because they're a new sponsor and we want to show them how much influence Trish Vegan has. So if you're thinking about a vitamin, this is the one to get. I'm telling you, I, I take it every day. I feel really good. It's gluten-free, non-GMO, all that good stuff. You can check out the website. Remember, discount code TRISH. So I'm seeing new team members here, on, the, which is really good news because we're going to, in just a short while, go out to some of our team members and have a little bit of, we've been doing these like Friday afternoon discussions, and I realize it's a holiday weekend, so it's, uh, it's, it's a trickier time for people, but I think it's important to do that, and it's something that, <laughs> that I want to do. And, and Andrew, you don't like your peas either. Okay, well, we're, we're simpatico on that. David, oh my gosh, that's like you just made my day. He said I could actually get away with passing for 30 something. And I'm so not. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, D3 Digital Pillars is putting in. Yeah, that's essential. Thank you guys. It is really good to see you. God bless the USA as well. DB, DB Douglas. And look, I, I think he's going to win. We were talking about VP earlier. We've got to continue that conversation maybe in the private chat because I really think that the VP is going to be important in different ways. I think people are going to be voting for Trump. They're not going to vote for whoever the VP is. He knows that. And so then it becomes a question of where can you really get the most bang for your buck? If you want electoral votes, New York's got a heck of a lot of them. You know, and I don't see anybody coming out of California on the Republican side that could really swing things there. So very, very interesting stuff. I, I see some of you making some comments on Diddy. Did you guys see the New York Post cover? Drew, can you throw this one up? This is great. Oh my goodness. This New York Post cover was something else. Bad Boy for Life. So Bad Boy Productions, that was his company. He gets raided by Homeland Security on Monday. Just absolutely wild. And look at this. Like, look at these. One of the, the things that keeps coming up about P. Diddy is that he really tended to outsource a lot of stuff. And this might be what has kind of insulated him. If you look at the quote here, an insider told the Post, other people carried out acts for him and he kept his hands clean. So if he's got somebody that's, you know, running the, the interference for the illicit substances and, you know, somebody, you know, wow. I mean, you just read everything that's on that screen. I mean, there, there's a lot of allegations there. But if other people are doing this for you, does that make you innocent? No. But again, I'll believe it when I see it. At this point, I'm kind of thinking, did they just want those tapes? What the heck was on those tapes? I mean... One can only imagine. <laughs> One does not want to imagine. Hey, listen, I'll see you team members over. Uh, just give me like two minutes. I just have to rejiggle some technology, but I'm going to be right over there with you in our private chat. Have a wonderful Easter weekend, everyone. Great to have you here. Remember to go to 76research.com. Use the code word DIV76 to get your 20% off the dividend portfolio. And I will see you here on Monday over the weekend as well on social.